So there was somebody else who came up with the idea of dinosaur train. His name is Craig Bartman. And he decided that mixing dinosaurs and trains was kind of like mixing chocolate and peanut butter if you were a kid. And so he created this show and they called on me and they said, would you like to be on the show and be our science advisor? So I said, absolutely. We started doing this in about 2008. And in 2009, Dinosaur Train launched and it's now in over 100 countries around the world. being on Dinosaur Train. It is one of the most fun things that I do. What else could I possibly do in which I could speak to millions of kids all over Earth about science and dinosaurs and encourage them to get excited about nature? Dinosaur Train lets me do that. And besides, I get to have fun playing around on TV. company, And I thought, well, that's interesting. That's not a phone call you get every day. And she said, we're going to do a show on PBS about dinosaurs. Do you think you might be interested in getting involved? And I said, well, that sounds pretty cool. What's the show called? And she said, it's going to be called Dinosaur Train. And I said, you can't call it that. And she said, why not? And I said, because I'm a paleontologist. I'm always trying to convince people that humans and dinosaurs didn't live at the same time, right, with the exception of birds. And she said, no, 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 don't worry. We're only going to put dinosaurs on the train. <laughs> And I stopped and I thought and I said, well, that is just brilliant, right? Like that's just, that's chocolate and peanut butter if you're four or five years old, dinosaurs and trains. And sure enough, it has been. Dinosaur Train is now airing in over a hundred countries around the world, tens of millions of households a month in the U.S. alone. And when I first started doing the show, I had to negotiate my tagline at the end of the show because, of course, one of the things you may or may not know about me is that I'm all about getting kids outside into nature. And I thought, if I help to create this show, then that's just going to addict kids to screens even more. So I have to have something to encourage them to get outside. My wife, Tony, came up with a tagline that I use at the end of every episode. And some of you are going to know what that tagline is. What do I say at the end of the show? You can say it with me. I say, get outside. Get into nature and make your own discoveries. Now, I'll be honest, at the time I had no clue if a television show could encourage kids to turn off the television and go outside. Experiment hadn't been tried. Now, seven years later, I can tell you it has been a grand success. I have heard from hundreds of parents, and PBS has heard from many more, that say that because of the show, their kids are going outside. Little Johnny's going out in the backyard digging holes looking for fossils. You know the parents love me for that, right? <laughs> Little Jenny's out there and she's in the backyard identifying dinosaurs flying around in the trees. It is great. Some parents even use me as an excuse. They'll say, remember, Dr. Scott says you gotta go outside. And the kids are going, yeah, okay, okay, we'll go outside. So why do I care so much about this? This is a big deal for me. The average child in the U.S. today spends seven to 10 hours every day looking at screens. Seven to 10 hours. They did this study a few years before and they came up with seven hours and they thought, well, we'll never beat that. And they came back and it was even higher, especially for older kids, seven to 10 hours. And it's because they're multitasking. They got multiple screens going at the same time. That same average American kid spends about seven minutes a day playing outdoors. What inspired me to be a paleontologist? That's a great question. Probably my mother. My mother was the one who got me outside and exploring nature. She was the one who gave me dinosaur books from the library to read. And so paleontology is one of the first words I learned how to spell. There was a time in my life when I could reliably spell the word paleontology and not my own last name. So I've always wanted to be a paleontologist, and some people say I just never grew up. You know, I still get to travel around the world and basically dig in a planet-sized backyard looking for dinosaurs. And how many people think it would be really great to be a paleontologist when you grow up, and it's okay if you're an adult and you put your hand up? So here's something that you may not know about me. I have wanted to be a paleontologist since I was three or four years old. This is me. At four years old, 
hugging what would one day become the state fossil of Colorado, Stegosaurus. So even back then I was in love with dinosaurs. There was a time in my life when I could reliably spell the word paleontology and not my own last name. So I have been a geek since a very young age. I have always wanted to be a paleontologist and many people say I just never grew up. You know, some kids grew out of dinosaurs and paleontology, I just never did. I went from having a sandbox in my backyard where I looked for dinosaurs to having a global-sized sandbox. And I've traveled all over the world. I've had all the What do I want kids to get from dinosaur training? I want kids to get that science is exciting, that there's still amazing discoveries to be made, so a lot of times when you read the textbooks, it's like, we've pretty much figured it all out. That is not true at all. There have been more dinosaurs discovered in the past 25 years than in all of history. I've had the honor and pleasure myself of naming about 15 different dinosaurs. So I want kids to know that they can go out there and make big discoveries. I want kids to know that science is fun. That they can go out there and just have a great time and it isn't like being in a lab in the science classroom. It's a blast of fun. And I want kids to know that it's important for them to get outside into nature and play. Too often these days kids are only inside staring at screens. We want them to get outside and explore nature because nature helps to boost our curiosity and our engagement and it's also really good for our bodies and our mind. What's, what are some of the names you gave dinosaurs? What are some of the names I've given dinosaurs? I named one after a rock star, Mashikasaurus Knopfleri, after Mark Knopfler, the lead singer of Dire Straits. That's a story I won't tell you right now. I named a dinosaur Achillosaurus, Aeneasaurus. I've named horned dinosaurs Cosmoceratops. That's my favorite because Cosmoceratops has 15 horns on its head. It blows away Triceratops with only three horns. I've named little raptor dinosaurs, one from Madagascar that has buck teeth. Um, birds, one called Raphnavis that's like almost a cross between a bird and a dinosaur with feathers, etc. So lots of different kinds of dinosaurs and I am not unique. There are paleontologists around the world who are naming new things all the time. My favorite dinosaur is definitely this one, Cosmoceratops. When I was your age, it was Stegosaurus, the one with all the plates and the spikes. Nowadays, it's definitely Cosmoceratops, in part because I had the pleasure of naming it, but in part because it's just the weirdest animal I've ever seen in my life. And the heads of these horned dinosaurs, some of them are only five foot tall, just the head, and some of them get almost ten feet tall, just the head. They have the biggest heads of any animals that have ever lived on land, so amazing stuff. Kid Stegosaurus, today, Cosmoceratops. It's a relative of Triceratops. Triceratops means three-horned face. You know, we saw it a minute ago. It's got one horn over each eye and one on the nose. Pretty cool, right? Cosmoceratops blows it away. Fifteen horns on its head. So it's got a horn on the tip of the nose, a horn on each cheek, one over each eye, and ten across the back of the frill, as well as these little bony doodads on the side of the frill one of the most ornate dinosaurs ever, and Cosmoceratops means ornate horned face. Incredible creature. Um, and we just named this thing a few years ago, it's from southern Utah. So, these animals, all these um, duck-billed dinosaurs and these horned dinosaurs are only found in the Cretaceous and stuff. Oh, thank you, my pleasure.